Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our College Credit Plus informational and counseling presentation for the 21-22 school year. CCP, College Credit Plus. The purpose of CCP is to provide students more opportunities to enhance their curriculum and challenge themselves. It provides a way for students to earn college credits while they're in high school. A few things you should know about College Credit Plus. First of all, CCP is not for all students. We are required by the State Department of Education to inform all students going into grades seven through 12 about the opportunities in CCP, but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone is qualified and ready to participate in College Credit Plus. There is an application process that we're gonna talk about, uh, and it is entirely up to the university based on students' academic records, maybe some ACT scores, uh, university placement tests. It's up to the university to decide whether students get into CCP or not. As guidance counselors, we are just facil facilitators of the process. So we are basically the middleman that gets the records of the students to the university to, uh, uh, for, for the application. The university themselves will make a decision whether a student gets in or not. We here at Newton Falls have been using Kent State Trumbull for many years as our primary university for College Credit Plus. We have a couple teachers that are certified by Kent to teach College Credit Plus here on our campus. Uh, we have a good relationship with Kent Trumbull. It's a small university, so that means communication is easier and most of the time better for us. So how can you take classes through College Credit Plus? There's several ways you can do that. First of all, you can be a traditional college student while you're in high school and take the classes on campus with a college professor. You can take classes online with a college professor. You can also take classes on our campus here at Newton Falls. We have Mrs. Marsh and Mrs. McDougall that teach math and English for us here on our campus and those are college classes. They are certified to do that. You also can have a combination of taking classes here and at Kent, okay? Again, we prefer you take classes through Kent Trumbull, not Kent Maine or any other branch, okay? So those are the various ways you can take college classes. There are pros and cons to College Credit Plus, and we'll start with the pros. Again, CCP allows you to expand your curriculum. It allows you to get college and high school credits while, uh, while you're in high school for absolutely no cost to parents or students. This will reduce your time. It takes you to get your college degree once you graduate from high school. It allows you to get a head start on what college life is all about and you have access to campus resources while you're in CCP. So those are some of the pros that are involved in being in CCP. As you can see on my list here, I have a lot of cons or negatives about College Credit Plus, and let's go through those. If you're a CCP student, you run the risk of lowering your GPA and class rank by taking a challenging college course. You may reduce the opportunity for you to uh, participate in extracurricular activities based on your college classes that you are taking. You may feel out of place in a college environment. If you go on campus to take a class, you are in an adult world with adult students and you are still a high school student. So for some of you, that may make you feel uncomfortable. You may have conflicts in your high school and college schedule. There may be certain classes you would like to take here at Newton Falls and then certain classes at Kent. And sometimes those conflict so it's like a puzzle we have to figure out how to put it together. If you take college classes on campus, you have to have reliable means of transportation, traveling back and forth to the college. 
even in the uh, dead of winter, when the uh, weather is bad, you have to get there and get to class. You are responsible to have the necessary technology needed for your CCP classes, meaning if you take an online class, you should have a uh, reliable computer to work with to take those online classes. As a CCP student, you're a college student. We as guidance counselors will not have access to your grades and your parents will not have access to your grades. So if you don't attend class and you don't uh, do your work and, and you're not getting good grades, we're not gonna know about it. I can tap into all your grades here at Newton Falls that you're taking through us. And I have records and I'm able to see that and your parents through Progress Book are able to see that. But any college class you take through FERPA laws, you're, uh, that, you're on your own. You're an adult, well, you're, you're a high school kid in an adult world. So you're responsible for your grades, you're responsible for your attendance. If you don't do well, if you fail a class, that's gonna be on you. By applying for College Credit Plus, you're accepting that responsibility and basically stating that, yes, I am a mature student and I am reliable, I'm gonna get this done. There are financial responsibilities for failing a College Credit Plus class or dropping the class after the deadline. We've had a couple kids this year that have had to drop the class because they weren't doing well and they will have to pay for the classes. We've had kids in the past that have failed classes. They had to pay for those classes. Newton Falls will pay for the class initially, but if you fail it or drop it after a deadline, then it becomes the student and family's responsibility. So um, you have pros and cons to the College Credit Plus program. And now you have to decide, you have to weigh those pros and cons and figure out, are you ready to take college classes? Are you academically ready? And are you mentally and mature ready? Okay. If you're not 100% sure, you can always apply and then before the semester starts, you can ask to uh, back out of it uh, before the semester starts. But once you're in and the semester gets rolling, you're basically committed to that. So it's an important decision you will have to make. Uh, some of you might ask, well, if I take classes at Kent Trumbull uh, and don't plan on going to Kent, after I graduate from high school, will those credits transfer? This link right here that I'll click on will allow you to decide uh, and allow, allow you to check the classes that you might want to take at Kent and see if they transfer to the university you plan on attending. So we'll click on that real quick. And uh, basically, you can uh, go through here and figure out um, which cl uh, classes will uh, transfer from Kent to whatever college you're going to, and you can do that right here, okay? There are two options when applying for CCP. One is option A, and the other is option B. Every student I've ever had do College Credit Plus has chosen option B. That's where Newton Falls pays for the course, and you get high school credit and college credit for those classes. There's no cost to the student or family unless you fail the course or withdraw from the course after the approved date. Option A, the only time that I could ever think that a student might want to do option A is if they have valedictorian status and they don't want to jeopardize the valedictorian status by taking a, a hard college class. Um, because every college class you take in high school, that's going to go on your high school transcripts and your college transcripts. So if you don't want to jeopardize your 4.0, being becoming a valedictorian in high school and you want to, your parents want to pay for a class, then you can choose option A when you apply. But like I said, everybody's done option B that I have ever had in my many years of guidance. Okay, uh, let's talk a moment about College Credit Plus and High School Athletic ability, uh, Eligibility. Uh, as you well know, uh, 
to become eligible for high school sports, you have to pass five credits in the marking period preceding your uh, sport. Uh, the only class that is not a eligibility credit that we offer is phys ed. Every other half credit or full credit course that we offer is an eligibility credit. Um, if you take CCP classes, CCP courses that are three, four, and five semester credit hours are considered two high school equivalent credits, okay? CCP courses that are two semester hours are considered a 1.34 high school equivalent credit. So they count a little more towards your eligibility. If you have any questions about that later, we can talk. Okay, let's talk about steps to applying and getting accepted into CCP. The first thing you need to do is attend an informational and counseling meeting. This, that's what you're doing right now. And at some point, we're going to give you a form and you're going to sign off, both student and parent, stating that you watched this presentation. Um, you should take the ACT. Now, here's the deal. Uh, with COVID and everything going on, schools being closed, things like that, uh, the State Department of Education has lessened the importance of taking the ACT for College Credit Plus. I just got an email the other day and uh, it involves House Bill 404, and I'm going to try to read that email real quick. Due to the changes in ACT, um, students can now qualify for CCP based upon their high school GPA as indicated on their transcripts. High school students must have a 3.0 or higher unweighted cumulative GPA uh, their course, their, on their course record. Uh, their course records may be evaluated in course subjects. If a student does not meet the 3.0 requirement but has ACT scores that meet the Ohio Department of uh, Education remediation free standards, the student will be considered for admission. Okay, so basically, here's what I would tell you regarding ACT. If you have a 3.0, or better cumulative GPA and you want to apply for um, CCP, go ahead and do that. It would help if you had an ACT score that met the remediation free standards. Okay, and we could take a look at the remediation free standards right here on this link. Um, and we look at the ACT 22 in math, 18 in English, and 22 in reading. Those are remediation free scores according to uh, Department of Education. Okay, um, another thing you're going to have to do to, uh, as, as part of your application is complete a intent to participate that needs to be in by April 1st. And uh, there's a link for that form. You can print it out and sign it and get it back to your guidance counselor, either Mr. Nicholson or myself. Um, you will need to um, apply to Kent Trumbull. So here's the link to Kent Trumbull CCP application. And we'll click on that link. And this is the Kent Trumbull College Credit Plus homepage. And you go over here to online application and you scroll down new CCP students submit online application and you go ahead and get started as a domestic student and click next and so on and so forth. So it's going to be on you to get on this website and apply for CCP. It's very important that you click on the Trumbull campus. You're going to see options for the main campus in Kent, Salem campus, the Geauga campus, uh, so uh, they've got several different campuses. Make sure you apply to the Kent Trumbull campus. Okay, another thing you'll have to do is uh, fill out a uh, permission form. Okay, that will get back to uh, Mr. Nicholson or myself. Here's a link to the permission form. Fill that out. Okay. Okay. Um, and once you have went through 
uh, advising from a Kent uh, advisor, you're going to fill out this authorization to attend form. And that is a link to that. Okay. So the deadline uh, for applications to be 100% completed, if you plan on doing summer CCP, you should have everything done and in by April 15th. If you plan on starting in the fall next year, your deadline for everything to be completed is May 15th. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention here in uh, I is uh, submit an official high school transcript. You'll have to do that as well. Okay, so after you've been accepted, it's very important that you follow your instructions in your acceptance letter to confirm your admission. This is has this has been a problem in the past. Students may do all the work to get their application in, but then they don't follow through with what's next. Okay. Uh, if you get, if you apply, they're going to be sending you emails, they're going to be sending you uh, things in the mail. Pay attention to that and follow through. If you don't follow through, you may not get into the classes you want. You may not be part of the CCP program. So if you're applying, follow through with everything. It's up to you. We can't, we don't get that paperwork. Again, you have to be mature and reliable to be in CCP. So once you apply, be looking for emails, be looking for things in the mail and read them and follow through. That's on you, not us, okay? They may ask you to take uh, placement assessments, the Alex test for math, okay? There'll be instructions for you to do that. You're gonna have to do that. Just because you've been accepted into College Credit Plus, it doesn't necessarily mean you automatically meet the requirements to take specific classes. So let me try to explain that a little bit. There's some general requirements on getting into CCP, but if you want to take certain classes, those certain classes may require you to test a little bit higher on these placement tests before you can take that certain class. Okay, so one of the things you're going to have to do after you've been accepted is to complete the KSU CCP orientation program. Now, normally this is done on campus, but because of COVID and everything else, uh, they've been doing that online. Nevertheless, you have to complete it. Any changes in your schedule that you make with your college classes, make sure you let Mr. Nicholson or myself know. Okay. How many credits and what type of credits can you take in CCP? Well, students are allowed to take up to 30 credits per year in College Credit Plus and a total of 120 semester hours credits starting in seventh grade. Now that's a lot, no, we've never had anybody do that. We have had students take a lot of credits during a year. Um, some have done that with success, some have not. Uh, what we recommend is one or two classes each semester. Um, that gives you a little bit of balance of high school and college. Um, so the other thing that you should know is you're not allowed to take any religious classes religion classes uh, during CCP. Okay, um, some of you will want to substitute uh, your required credits with CCP classes. So for example, um, as you know, to graduate from high school, you need four English credits. Well, if you take a college writing one, that counts as two high school credits of English, okay? So for some of you who, uh, let's say you have freshman and sophomore English credits and you'll be a junior next year, if you take college writing one, that will give you two more high school credits. And then you could take college writing two in the, in the spring and that would give you two more high school English credits. So you'll have an abundance of English credits. Some of those can be used as uh, elective credits towards your graduation. 
So some of these courses that you take through CCP can be substituted for high school required classes. Okay, there are resources that are available through Kent State Trumbull, uh, such as you're gonna have an academic advisor assigned to you. You'll have access to the library, the computer labs, the writing center if you need help with a writing assignment. There are some tutoring options. Uh, there are some um, online tutoring options and they have a fitness center that once you are accepted into CCP, since you're a college student, you have access to all these resources. Um, here's our contact information here at Newton Falls High School. Uh, students with the last names A through K, you are assigned to me, and there's my phone number and email, and Mr. Nicholson has students last names L through Z. There's his contact information. The CCP advisor for Kent Trumbull is a gentleman named Robert Rigel. His phone number is there and his email. Um, if you have any questions, I would suggest you start with us. And then if you need to contact Robert for something, then you can contact Robert. So here's a checklist. Uh, just uh, pretty much a review of uh, what we've been talking about. Um, what is CCP? CCP is a college credit plus program we had created by Ohio legisl legislator to establish a way for qualifying Ohio students in grades 7 through 12 uh, to enroll at a college or university to earn both high school and college credit. That's what CCP is. That's what we talked about. How, uh, what's the admission requirements? 3.0 cumulative GPA. Now this says and 21 ACT, okay? or uh, SAT uh, combined score, blah, 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 1010, uh, meet re remediation free standards. Now I told you and I read you earlier in this presentation about the email I received on House Bill 404 because of COVID and ACT uh, tests not being readily available as much. Um, they will look at your cumulative GPA and hopefully it's a 3.0 or above. Okay, here's some deadlines. Uh, if you want to do summer, you have to have things in by April 1st, uh, May 1st for fall. Okay, uh, the online application is right there. You got to do that. Okay, different ways to take uh, uh, CCP classes are right here. All right. Um, Here's a checklist. Meet with your school counselor to discuss your CCP opportunities. That's basically what we're doing right now. Submit a letter of intent by April 1st. Okay, that uh, form was uh, linked on my presentation. Take the ACT or SAT. Well, they're kind of getting around that. They're asking for a 3.0, okay? Apply for CCP online right there. Complete and submit the College Credit Plus permission form. There's a link on my uh, presentation to do that. Uh, submit a transcript. Once you apply and you let us know and you turn in a letter of intent, we're going to do uh, the transcripts for you. Okay. After you've been admitted, again, very important, you follow the instructions in your acceptance letter to confirm your admission. Take any required placement assessments that they ask you to take. Again, that, that, that means you have to follow through with things on your own. I'm not going to prompt you. Mr. Nicholson's not going to prompt you. Attend your required Kent State University CCP orientation, whether it be online or in person. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. That's about it. I hope you guys are well. Uh, miss seeing you guys. Hopefully after the holidays, we'll get back to some normalcy. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a holler and we'll be sure to help you out. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.